Okay, so just a reminder of where we're at now. Um, if you look at the right hand side here, we've got little labels on the uh, uh, for each kind of level of this um, engine. Um, so if you remember, uh, the plus object uh, controls the center frequency of the carrier. So this is what uh, this control will be. Um, this one here uh, is the uh, depth modulation, or what's called the deviation. And finally at the top here, we've got uh, the uh, frequency of modulation. So how might we use these usefully? Um, uh, well, for a start, if we move to the next page on the exercises sheet. Um, I say explore the three controls, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then referring to our solutions for subtractive and amplitude modulation, which we tried uh, in previous tutorials, uh, attempt the following. Control the frequency of the carrier oscillator using a K-slider object. So just as we did before, we want to be able to control the overall frequency of the, uh, or sorry, our carrier frequency with uh, a keyboard. Um, and that's fairly straightforward. We need first a K-slider. and an M2F object and simply connect that to our input for the plus object which again is controlling the, uh, the carrier frequency. <coughs> then it says control the overall level of output using the right hand outlet of the case slider. So once again we want to be able to control the level um, of our overall output independently of our kind of global volume control. Um, so we'll do exactly what we've done before. At the output, so basically the last thing that happens prior to this final gain control, uh, we want a multiplication object which, uh, or a signal multiplication object, oops, which takes Oops. the uh, scaled output from uh, the velocity output of the case slider. So that goes into there. Um, so that's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, and once again, um, just as with the amplitude modulation, we would probably want there to be some kind of relationship between the... Um, frequency of the carrier and the frequency of the modulator if we want the tone or the timbre to main, remain relatively consistent. It's a little bit more complicated with this than it is with amplitude modulation and I'm not going to go into um, a significant amount of detail with it because uh, we can uh, go into harmonicity and um, various calculations that will enable us to do that so that the timbre is truly consistent. What I suggest though those of you who are interested in going further with this um, then you might, if you go to the last um, page of this exercises sheet, you will see that there is um, something that Brett's done, uh, a kind of uh, free, uh, supplemental frequency modulation PowerPoint tutorial that he's done. So go and have a look at that, um, again if you want a bit more sophisticated frequency modulation stuff. We'll keep it reasonably simple for the purposes of these though. Anyway, um, we want a relationship between the um, frequency of the carrier, as I say, and the frequency of the modulator. And here again, we just use a, a multiplication object. So, oops, and I'll keep it within the signal domain, I think. So we'll put a tilde after the multiplication object. And I'll simply send that to the frequency of the modulator cycle, which means that this uh, float uh, number box is redundant. And I can send, um, I can control the ratio of the relationship here. So let's see whether we've, uh, that's all working, hopefully it is. Okay, uh, I made a slight mistake here. 
um, we need one of the inlets to, or the left hand inlet to the multiplication tilde object to be a signal input. And as, at the moment, as you can see, uh, what they're both they're both in uh, the back, both max cables rather than MSP cables. So I'm going to um, add an object which we have come across before. It's the SIG tilde object, and basically what that does is that converts um, a control uh, message into a uh, signal. So uh, if I connect that to there, oops, sorry, it's a bit messy now. There we go. So now that's working. Um, so we have a fairly, you know, we've got a a uh, fairly a much more complex um, uh, signal, which is. The relationship between the harmonics changes in terms of their volumes, um, but the same harmonics appear, I think, in each, relative to the original pitch or the carrier pitch. Um, but we might want to um, change those things over time, so we've got permit an evolving timbre. Again, I'm interested in you producing evolving timbres for your projects. Um, so we might want to uh, ally all of that with some kind of uh, enveloping, um, which is what we'll do next. 